Hi class, uh, on Monday class, we uh, finally concluded uh, chapter 13 and um, in this short video, I'm going to talk about a brand new chapter, chapter 14, which is the uh, application of Laplace transform. Uh, so as an electrical engineering uh, program, so what we have to uh, plan to do is to take advantage of this uh, Laplace uh, techniques that we learned from the previous chapter and apply it to circuit. So in electrical engineering circuit that we have so far has been doing is the RLC so, uh, element, right? R stands for resistance element, L stands for inductors, and then C stands for capacitors. So we know that the L and the C has frequency because of the um, J omega. And the resistor element can be written in this uh, way as a re resistor, resistor, then element. would be, um, so you have a one simple resistor, two terminal, and then uh, R is a symbol of resistor, and coming from point, the, f the current flowing through from point A to point B would be uh, denoted as I here, and we have the voltage across this resistor from A to B, we can write it as a plus, minus, as the V, small letter. So both of the V and I here are in a small letter. So what we are trying to uh, split out for this uh, elements, uh, three elements are that we're going to elaborate one in the time domain, time domain, and then the other one would be on the frequency domain. So it's always good that, that I can draw a straight line using a tablet like this. So uh, so likewise, we're going to draw something like this similarly. You have uh, from point A to point B, and then uh, plus, minus as the voltage is across this resistor. So I'm going to use V, capital V in this time, and then the current, current flowing, fro flowing through that resistor as denoted as the capital I. So uh, this is the resistor element and the equivalent circuit. Um, for the Laplace transform. As you can see here is that there's no whatsoever uh, relation with the frequency domain because uh, purely resistive uh, circuit has nothing to do with the frequency uh, as you may already know uh, now. So this is going to be the uh, frequency domain. So what I'm going to talk about next is to uh, introduce capacitor element on time domain and frequency domain. So I'm going to create a new page here. And uh, what you're seeing here is um, I'm going to draw, create a new page with a capacitor element. So that we have capacitor element. So like what I had drawn on my previous slide, um, we're going to have a very simple purely capacitive um, uh, element in this elaboration. So we'll have a, a capacitor um, so that for, from terminal A to B with the uh, C stand for the capaci capacitance and then the voltage across this two point as with a small V and then current flowing through the capacitor uh, denoted as small i and I'm going to use the red color to indicate here as the initial value, capital V, no. So zero indicate here as the initial value of the voltage. As you probably already recall from the circuit one is that capacitor uh, is the continuations of voltage. So we can relate that equation with I equal to uh, C times dV uh, dt. So no matter what, we're going to have a continuation of voltage for the capacitors. And if you want to flip it around from, uh, from uh, current pers uh, to voltage perspective, we're going to do this uh, integration by uh, moving this uh, integral to the uh, left-hand side. So I can write it as a V equal to 
1 over c integration from 0 to t and uh, as a function of i d x <coughs> plus the initial voltage so if we want to do the analysis like this we have to uh, take into account what was uh, the original voltage before we actually add addition more here so what you see here the, the integral actually indicate that how much uh, voltage more you want to add from the V0 uh, from uh, for to the, the, the time uh, to the time scale of t so we have this all right out and what I um, do this denote as this part of this uh, analysis is this is still again in the time domain so this is something that you have um, already done for the first circuit and this first circuit there's no stranger to you is that we have the integrations c times vt uh, dt and then you want to flip it around you do this uh, integral again v equal to 1 over c integration from um, 0 to t with respect to i uh, dx and then plus the initial value of v0 so this is a very uh, not not string to you so we're going to use um, uh, write the equivalent circuit for the frequency domain so I have the time domain here and then I can write it as a frequency domain. So there the are two ways for you to um, draw the equivalent circuit for capacitor. One way is we have this capacitor in series with the voltage source because of the continuation. So you have this plus minus and make sure you put at the right um, terminal. So you have this uh, <coughs> and then this is stand for what if you recall this one over j omega c and we uh, have been talking about replacing j omega with uh, s so we can just simply write as one over s times c and then uh, since this is in the frequency domain now I'm going to use a red color to indicate the notation I'm going to introduce here so plus minus from the terminal uh, a to the new terminal B which is extending further the new uh, with the additional uh, voltage source here so I have uh, this from A to B and then the current flowing through this is gonna be uh, the same as the capital I and then of course the voltage across capacitor and the voltage source would be the V capital V so this is one way how we can represent um, the equivalent circuit for in frequency domain and don't forget about this uh, V0 over S and I will elaborate more in detail later once I uh, come uh, c conclude this uh, capacitor element um, so as you probably already can guess is that uh, to be able to write this equation you can just write as um, V equal to I uh, over S times C. So you are be wondering where is the uh, S times C coming from? This is actually the uh, reactant value that you can see. So, the, um, so if I would have to break this down, I can actually do this with uh, I times one over S times C. So they means the same thing. And then of course plus the initial value of the V zero over S. So this is a representation um, of the voltage, um, I have to put it as capital, for the series model in, for the capacitor. So you probably can guess now, um, putting series and you probably have a, a current source for the parallel. So what I'm going to do, yes, it's going to be um, configured in that way with the current source instead of the uh, voltage source. So I'm going to leave some space here so that I can draw two elements in parallel and then this is now make sure that you have the arrow po uh, pointing toward this direction up and then and then you're going to do this here with the B and the A terminal A and B so this again remain the same as we have before which is um, 1 over s times c so this is again 1 over j omega c that's 
um, what we have. And the voltage across this terminal and that terminal would be, um, I'm going to use the red color, indicate the capac capital lies uh, V, and then the current, current flowing through this two element from terminal A would be the capital I. <coughs> so the value for this uh, current source would be C times V capital uh, sub zero. So this is the initial voltage of how you get here. So think for a moment. You look at this circuit and then you look at this circuit. You may wonder something looks very very familiar. Yes, that is terminal equivalent circuit to northern equivalent circuit. So what you do for uh, the conversion from terminal to northern equivalent circuit is that um, to find out the current source here, you can actually use this V naught over S um, divided by 1 over S C and once you have that, it's going to get to you um, C times V uh, naught. That's how it looks like uh, in terms of the equation. So if you want to write this out in terms of current instead of rather than the voltage source, I'm going to do the same thing here as uh, capital I equal to S times C times the voltage source and then minus C times V zero. So to relate this equation you have a current going into the circuit and you have you probably can see that it's two term one term going this way and one term going this way. So this must be the term of C times C S times C times voltage right because V over 1 over S times C will give you V times S times C. So that's the first term going through this capacitor. And the other current going through f the other side is actually C times uh, capital V naught. But the thing why we have minus sign is because we're going to assign the direction going through it this way, which the symbol indicate otherwise. That's why you have the uh, minus sign here indicate here. So. Um, so this is a pretty straightforward here to indicate of the current I equal to S times C uh, times voltage minus C times voltage uh, initial voltage. So I'm going to use this blue color to indicate this voltage, the current flowing into, into this and that and that. That's actually one, two, three. One, two, three. That's the term. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. So similarly, for this circuit, you have plus minus the sum of voltage across this capacitor as well as the voltage source here. So you have voltage capital V equal to voltage across this um, capacitor will be I times the reactant. So in this case, it will be 1 over S times C plus the initial voltage of V naught over S. So what you may wonder, why do you have this? Uh, so th I'm going to, before I get into that, I'm going to write 1 two and three so this is a one indicate from a to b and then part b will be part two will be this and then part c will be between across uh, the voltage source so you can see the term carefully on how it will look like so so converting from time domain to frequency domain what you do is do the Laplace transform for the value here like this is actually V naught times 1 which means it's a U, uh, step function UT so this function can be actually do the transform with 1 over S that's how you get the V naught over S term here as the initial value of the voltage for the capacitor element so similarly I'm going to do uh, for the inductor element as well so what I'm going to do I'm going to add a new page here um, insert page and here we go um, so capacitor element the next page will be inductor element so we have inductor element it's a good thing to have uh, written on the computer so that you know Sometimes you draw a line, it's not straight enough, it will help me to uh, make it straight. So that's the nice of using a computer. So uh, again, I'm going to split this two into uh, the time domain here and the frequency. So I'm going to write here as a time 
domain for the inductor and then you have the frequency domain and likewise I'm going to use that single inductor element here with two terminal from terminal A to terminal B so the inductor value here is indicated as uh, the L capital L uh, we, uh, the convention sign of plus minus from A to B across that uh, inductor with a small V value and then of course the current going through that inductors with a small i in the time domain and then of course with the initial value I'm going to put it as capital I zero so recall the first uh, circuit that you learned before um, to relate uh, voltage and current with respect to um, the inductor, what would that be the continuation of that? That would be the small v equal to L times d uh, i dt. So this, if you have to compare with the capacitor, is the other way around. So capacitor would be i equal to c times dv dt. So in this case, and for this con this continuous function for current, we can just move this uh, integral around to the, the other side. You have uh, i equal to 1 over L integration from 0 to t with respect to the small t because it's in the time domain dx plus the initial value of current capital I 0 so that is for the inductor uh, element and the equivalent circuit of that will be two kind one is the uh, northern equivalent one is a uh, uh, definite e equivalent. So I will, will ta start with the definite equivalent cir circuit first. So the definite equivalent circuit will look something like this. I have to draw it a little bit slowly so it, it can the picture looks a little bit nicer. And then this, perhaps uh, to get a better one, I just simply copy this from this. So I'll delete this sign for now. No, relabel later. So you have this um, voltage source connected in parallel, in series. So plus minus, and then node A and B. So this term reactant would be uh, for the inductor will be S times L. I think we probably talked about this many times, which is J omega L, and we substitute J omega equal to S. That's how we get S L and then this L value of the voltage here will be um, L times um, I zero. I will explain a little bit later. Um, so we have this voltage across terminal A and B with the capital V and then the capital I as the current going across this two terminal, terminal uh, two elements. Uh, element for the inductor and then the voltage source. So you may wonder how are you going to get this um, value I L times I uh, not which is actually the uh, L times uh, I that equal to voltage right so this is how you get it uh, when it was coming from the steady state from the uh, existing uh, value for the initial state and to sum this out the voltage across this inductor plus the voltage across this voltage source we can write the equation as V uh, capital V which is this will be equal to S times L times I why is that because we have the reactant S times L times the current so this is basically like V equal to I, I, I Z and this is a Z part except this is the x root the reactant part instead of the impedance minus um, minus this time is minus so I'm going to explain a little bit, bit L times I zero so the reason here is minus compared with the previous one we have what we have the plus because of the convention we assigned this plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus so it will be plus um, but for this situation you have plus minus minus plus plus minus so you're gonna have to stick with the consi consistent convention so you have the minus L time the initial current of uh, I sub zero so once you have this set out for the 
uh, Davenant equivalent circuit, it looks like Davenant, although you may not agree with me, so it looks something like this. Um, if you sketch the whole uh, uh, element, the two, and put it in this form, it looks something like Davenant. And convert this into the Norton equivalent circuit. this so it will look something like what we have drawn on the capacitor so we have this and then um, inductors and then the current source so this time you're going to point down downward so direction for current source is very important the same thing as a polarity on the voltage source because it's, you're going to add them out together you have to be very, very careful about the combination you use so I'm going to label all the elements right now. So this is a S time L, which is a J omega L. And then this is a current source of I0 over S, right? This is uh, coming from this part, which is the time domain. When you go to the frequency domain, you will have to divide by S uh, by looking on the table 13.1. So you have the I not divided by S in this case. And then I'm going to label uh, the variable in red on the capital V <coughs> and then the current, current flowing into the node of as a capital I so what I have this as um, two terminals so you have uh, terminal A and terminal B so to, to write this uh, sum of the current this I, I capital I will be equal to uh, current going into this so it will be um, so this is actually the impedance value so if you write in the form of current you're going to have voltage equal to v over uh, z right in this case you have voltage across this so you're going to write the capital v over s times l which is a uh, part of the impedance plus the initial value of i sub zero over s so you can see that uh, we are actually assigning the, the notation consistently. I'm going to put, use the blue color again to indicate each term. So in this way that you have uh, current going this way, that way, and the other way. One, one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Same thing for um, for the uh, turbulent equivalent circuit will be uh, this is one, two, and three. So this is one, two, and then minus because of that. So minus plus three. So so far we have gone through resistor, inductor, and capacitor. Right, three major elements of the circuit and you may wonder what else is as left so w if you look to the uh, um, the textbook that we have there's actually four different combination on uh, on page 698 so you can see all different combination I'm gonna write this on the, my very first page page 698 so that sort of summarize all uh, the three major element in circuit but there's one missing which is the ideal transformer that I'm going to talk next so I'm going to create a new page um, as ideal transformer so we have ideal transformer if you recall what ideal means is that the transformer basically have no loss so the only inf information we have is the dots and the ratio and the inductance and the mutual inductance. So I'm going to draw the same way how the textbook is drawn as a, another box. And then you have uh, the primary side of the transformer with a dot here, indicate the placements of winding and then another winding here as another dot so those dots are in parallel 
So we will have another external circuit like this. So you can, I can write this as a current flowing into uh, the primary winding of the transformer as I1 sub T and then the voltage across here will be V1 sub uh, as a function of T and then of course the value of the inductor will be L1 and then there's a uh, L2 same thing <coughs> going into uh, the, the winding of the transformer as I2 function of T plus minus V2 as a function of T and then you have um, the mutual. So, um, what would that be the equivalent circuit for that? Um, so, um, the equivalent circuit of that will be, um, I don't want to redraw the whole thing, so I just um, make a copy of the picture that I just drawn and then move it down here as a new diagram I hope they are proportional when I make it smaller so as you can see what I intend to do is to this is uh, obviously the time domain and then this is a frequency domain So to change from frequency to uh, time domain to frequency domain, I'm going to need to remove this uh, box here and include an additional element, which is the voltage source. So the, the, the voltage source here will be this circle with the plus and minus connecting back to the, uh, to the black box. So, um, So to write that relationship, this is no longer this. It has to be before that, uh, before the uh, voltage source. So I have, I'm going to delete that and write it as plus minus capital V this time because it's in a frequency domain, one with S on it, and then this is going to be frequency. So from small letter to capital letter, I one sub S. Same thing for the other side of the transformer I2 as a function of frequency and we're going to do the same thing here um, I'm going to delete this and add a voltage source on the other side plus minus and then using a different color to indicate the, the other side of the black box and then voltage across this black spot will be capital V2 as a function of frequency so what you need here is uh, multiply by the S here on both sides and um, wait a second I don't think that's S it's just so L1 uh, and L2 Actually, so it will be another S. So because of the J omega L1, so it will be S and S on the L2, same thing, times S here as well. So to write this equation, we can write simplify it as a L1 times capital I1 initial value. We usually use zero as an initial uh, indication plus N capital N times um, I to zero so if you recall what we've been through for the dot convention is when we have the current uh, and the inductor going through this it will be L times um, I1 with the initial value plus the N value uh, of the other current so you have a I2 uh, right now here and then the same thing for L2 times I2 
zero plus capital M times I one zero. As you can tell right now, we have introduced uh, four different uh, combinations. We have um, the first one of the resistant element, the second one as capacitor element, and then the third one as inductor element, and then the last one as a uh, ideal transformer. So all of this, whatever you have learned from the first circuit, remain the same principle up to this point, except that we are actually in including frequency as part of the analysis right now. So when you learn it from the first circuit, I, 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 I bet what you have learned is was coming from this equation on the DC circuit, right? Right now we are dealing with is an AC circuit. So what you will have to do um, is, uh, I think, in order for me to successfully uh, connect this equivalent circuit with what you have uh, absorbed so far, perhaps um, getting you another uh, example that relate to one of this might be helpful. So I am going to talk one of the example in the textbook uh, just, just to connect with what I just uh, discussed here. Um, but just to give you a quick overview so far is that if we don't have the initial value of this uh, for uh, the capacitor, this term is cancer. If we don't have the initial current of the capacitor, this term is cancer. Up. So we will pretty much represent the same circuit as we have uh, on the uh, left hand side, except that this two uh, frequency domain are equivalent represent the initial voltage and current, which rep uh, is shown in parallel and series of this Delvin and Norton equivalent. So let's start with uh, 14.5 uh, for the example in the textbook. The 14.5, the last, uh, the, the question <coughs> from the textbook. <coughs> 14.5 So you have a voltage source plus minus um, with a resistor and inductors and then in parallel with um, the capacitors it's hard to draw a nice picture on the computer sometimes, but I'm trying my best. Um, so what you are asked to find out is the voltage output here, V out in time domain, and you have value of two ohm for the resistor, one Henry, and then half uh, Farad, and then uh, is question asks is find, find the V0 T, this is in time domain, so the all small letter, where T is greater than 0. So obviously, you don't have to worry about the initial value because this information is not even given to you at all. So what you can do is simply to do that is to convert this into the frequency domain. So this is all in uh, time domain. And by the way, I forget to add this uh, issue is e to the power minus t uh, step functions of uh, voltage volt. So to convert that into the frequency uh, frequency domain, you have the voltage source plus minus and then uh, resistor, inductors, and then the capacitors. Um, so if you look at the table 13.1, this will convert into 1 over uh, S plus 1. Sound very familiar, right? So 1 over uh, S plus 1, 2 ohm remain 2 ohm because there's no frequency involvement. The 1 Henry is J omega uh, L. So you have S times 1 which give you S. And this is a uh, 2 over S because you have half of it. You, you invert that. Uh, so this is actually coming from uh, 
1 over j omega c and then you have what uh, 1 over s type c and the c is half so you flip it around will give you 2 over s and that's how you get it um, and then uh, so your motivation is to find out the voltage across these capacitors v out now is in this frequency domain capital v right so recall what you have learned from the circuit how are you going to solve this problem perhaps uh, it's not a bad idea to write this in a voltage divider uh, situation I'll show you how uh, just give me a second I'm going to create a new page next to this and then so V out will be equal to the ratio of the impedance right so you have this uh, 2 plus s plus 2 over s and then you have 2 over s as a nominator value because you want to know the voltage across this that's how we do for since the beginning of the semester for voltage divider and then you multiply by the uh, voltage source here which is uh, Vs so Vs will be what 1 over uh, S plus 1 the beauty part of uh, how we're going to put this in the way that you want to do using your calculator is that the calculator automatically help you to simplify so if you type this in I can't show you here on my computer uh, because I don't have an overhead camera but if you uh, click uh, uh, punch in the 2 over x divided by 2 plus x plus 2 over x you will eventually get what I have here as 2 divided by uh, x squared of course I have the x here on my uh, calculator plus 2 times s uh, plus 2 so and then multiply by 1 over uh, s plus 1 does this sound very very familiar to you now yes we are all going to deal with the partial fraction expen uh, expansion so what you need to do is combine these two together you will get uh, 2 over um, s plus 1 and then s plus uh, s squared plus 2 times s plus 2 and then you will have to uh, factor this term let's see what I get here um, factors x squared plus x times 2 plus 2 with respect to x is actually a complex uh, root so uh, if you use the seek uh, factors what you will get in the end it will be 2 over uh, s plus 1 uh, will give you s minus minus 1 plus j so that I will have to change the bracket open bracket different and then um, the other one will be s plus 1 plus j we'll extend that so as you can see here is that this is what we learned before the repeated uh, complex number um, how many um, roots we have here so we have uh, k1 k2 and k2 uh, conjugate so you can write this as um, k1 s plus 1 plus k2 s minus minus 1 plus j plus k to conjugate s plus 1 plus j so this is uh, the same thing what you have been exercising uh, since uh, the beginning of chapter 13 so uh, I am going to let you uh, do this by yourself and you know uh, ask me the uh, solution uh, the next time um, 
So I already showed you the step how to get to the partial fraction expansion. Um, I think that finding the co coefficients for each of the terms may, may not be uh, too difficult for you, so I'm going to skip that. And um, so we'd like you to, to work on the similar problem for the homework submission that due on Friday. So that will be uh, homework that will be uh, example uh, question 14.4. So uh, this is the same question that we have before. So this question mentioned that we don't have uh, the initial value. So the v not zero t when t is greater than zero, uh, there's no I additional information is given to you. So you're gonna just did what I just show you here uh, to solve the circuit and uh, try to rely on your calculator a, bit, a little bit because it will help you to simplify the ratio or the s uh, as a function of s in the more simplified uh, format so that you can um, uh, avoid a lot of uh, errors that uh, may lead to the uh, wrong answer in the end. So uh, I would suggest you to try this homework 14.4 um, and I will talk about uh, the Monday homework solution on my next uh, recorded uh, lecture. Um, if you have any questions about this, uh, feel free to email me. But basically, to summarize all what I have to cover up to this point today, is that um, whatever we have on the time domain and frequency domain for the uh, resistor, even for capacitor or inductor, or the ideal transformer, it will all be about the same with the substitution of J omega and uh, equal to S, which is a frequency domain. But you got to watch out a little bit, especially when there's an initial value, to change the topology of the equivalent circuit by having that. Otherwise, don't worry about it because it's not going to have this. Uh, when this cancel out, it will be disappear. So hope this helps. And uh, uh, I'll talk a little bit more for example for the ne next recorder lecture.